Today on Judge Faith, a landlord gets gangsta. There's wires from the box all the way out to the electrical pole in the alley with the illegal hookup. She knew the condition of the house. I didn't have the house set up to rent yet. Was the electricity hooked up illegally? No, I did not have a legal hookup. You say, meet me at my house, tell me what time and I will be there. What kind of landlord are you? What, what do you do when somebody's late on the rent? <laughs> Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Brenda Brown says she refused to move into the defendant's rental home because the promised improvements weren't made. She's suing for the return of her security deposit. Defendant Catherine Palmer says her home was ready, but Brenda backed out at the last minute, so she's keeping the deposit as an inconvenience fee. She's counted suing for expenses and defamation of character. All rise, court is in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, the litigants have been sworn in. This is the case of Brown versus Palmer. Thank you, Juan. Brenda Brown? Yes. You are suing the defendant, Katherine Palmer? Yes. For $2,250, you say she owes you for the return of a security deposit? Yes, Your Honor. And you're countersuing, ma'am, for $5,000 for defamation of character, moving expenses, a utility bill, and threats? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, we'll start with you, Ms. Brown. Why don't you tell me what's going on here? Well, what happened this year in Michigan for us was a record winter. Mm -hmm. And the home that I lived in with my daughter, the pipes froze and burst. So the basement was flooded. I needed somewhere to live in the dead heat of winter. So I started looking myself, looked at 15 houses. I went to a rental agency as well and paid money for them to assist me with rental properties. I was given an address on Old Town and I didn't like the house. It, was, it wasn't up to par. While I was there, next door was a pretty nice house. A neighbor talked to me and told me that the rent sign that was in the window had been recently removed. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I wrote a note just to inquire if it was still for rent, mm -hmm. and I put my name and number on it and placed it in the mailbox. The next morning, I received a call from the defendant. Mm -hmm. She stated, um, how, how did you know the house was for rent? And I explained that to her. She said, well, I took no, the sign honest. out of the window because no one was serious about the house and they wasn't giving me my money. Mm -hmm. So I told her, I said, well, I need somewhere to live. I'm serious about the house. We set up an appointment to meet and we did that. Okay, and what do you say happened? So you were renting out? What... Basically, I, my house was not up for rent at all. Okay. This lady, I met Miss Brenda Brown. Well, what, she came it, up was to this the house, house you were living in? Who was living in the home at the time? No, um, the co-owner was living in the house, but we were using the house for storage, getting it ready to rent it out okay. again. He okay. was out of town. Got it. Okay. So no one was living in the home at the time? No, but it was a bunch of furniture, all my stuff and his stuff belongs inside the home. Okay. So That day, or the next day, you go to the house and you see there's a note. I look at the note and I decide to call Miss Brenda Brown. So then she comes to me with the sob story about she got cancer and she done got ripped off by all these pe landlords where she done gave money and they ain't gave her money back. So I assured her I wouldn't do that. She had told me also she had a 14-year-old daughter who can go to school right down the street and two 30-year-old sons, but the two 30-year-old sons would not live with her because she stayed in the hospital so, a lot. So you so changed So I made accommodations mind? for her, yeah. Okay, now what, what date was that conversation? March the 18th. Okay, and when was the home supposed to be ready for her to move in? What was the date? April the 3rd. Okay, and so what happens? You give her money yes, as a security deposit? Yes, How much? Uh, the first amount was $750 for the security. That was on March 18th. On March 26th, I gave her an additional $750 for the first month's rent. Okay, so that's, no, that's how much honest. the rent was going to be? No, it was mm -hmm. $750 first month, last month, and security. The okay. day she supposed to pay the rent, she's supposed to fill out the uh, lease agreement. Mm -hmm. Right. But she didn't even come and get her receipt for the second seven fifty. Well, well, but you admit she gave you fifteen hundred. I admit she gave me seven fifty on the March the eighteenth, and, and then, then she gave me another seven fifty 
on the 26th. So she did give you $1,500. Yes, she did. Yeah. And then she ends up not moving in on the... The third. Fir on the third. What happened? Well, on the 1st of April... So, and let me just be clear. The two of you didn't have a written lease. No, she Why never... Why wasn't there a written she, lease? She, she never refused provided. to show up and sign a written lease. She Why didn't even she come back and get her... Show up? She showed up to give you $1,500. She stopped me to give me the $1,500. What do you mean by she stopped you? She looked for me. I told her I was at the park. I told her I was at the fish market. She asked me when will I be home. I said, well, around 4.30 then. Okay. To give so you money. She chased me around to find me, to give me some money, but I'm letting you know I don't have the rent receipt with me, and I don't have the lease agreement with me. And she and insisted so what, she's that forcing, I... She's forcing herself on you? Yeah, she insisted that I take it, so I said, okay, well, I'm gonna have I the house I wish someone would insist I take $1,500. Coming up, the details are disputed. I didn't hook up no illegal electric. I, I, I told her the lights and gas was on. Already. Okay, I didn't ask you if you hooked it up. I asked, was there an illegal hookup present oh, at the home? Oh, ask her. She called DTE to get it shut no, down. No, I'm asking you, Miss Palmer. Her. This is your house. Plaintiff Brenda Brown says she backed out of the deal because the rental home wasn't ready. She's suing for the return of her security deposit. Defendant Catherine Palmer says she's keeping the deposit as an inconvenience fee. She's countersuing for expenses and defamation of character. Okay, so you never signed a lease, so what ends up happening? Were you uh, stalking her? No, ma'am. I know the definition of stalking. Yes, she was. What I did was inquire. <laughs> okay. So, on April 1st, about 7 a.m., the defendant called uh -uh. me and stated, I just wanted to know if you wanted to go half with me on a rental of a U-Haul. Mm -hmm. We could save money by me moving my stuff out and you moving your stuff in. Well, what's wrong I with said, that? I said, no, ma'am. Yeah, well, what's wrong with that? Oh, no, ma'am. I don't need any car. assistance. What's okay. wrong with that? I don't need any assistance with my moving. Okay. She but, was okay, a, but she was saying, let's split the let's cost, split the of, cost the of a truck. She would use it to move things out, yes. and you would use it to move things in. I, get, yes. I don't see a big deal. I What's do. What's the big deal? That had nothing to do with me. And on two days before I was to move into the property, none of the repairs were done. Had the two of you discussed that there would be certain repairs done by April yes, 3rd? Yes, Okay, no, and how yeah. do you know that those repairs weren't done? Well, the first repair was the front door itself, mm -hmm. and there was supposed to be locks on a house, not a master lock about this long, mm -hmm. and at the bottom of the door, there's a hole where the knob should be. Okay. So on April 1st, when you say you called her and changed your mind, when did you see that the repairs had not been done? Immediately after yeah, I hung up the phone with her April Tell 1st, I went to her property, mm -hmm. and I saw that the locks had not been fixed. So there's no snow now. I started walking around the house, because remember, she has my $1,500 to move in in two days. Mm -hmm. And then I saw there's no meter in the box that there's supposed to be an electrical meter. There's wires from the box all the way out to the electrical pole in the alley. What was going on with the electricity? Your Honor, the electricity really had nothing to do with the house. What happened is when Did I was going to bear her... No, I did not have a legal hookup. I told him it was a co-owner and he's in Vegas and I need to talk to him and see what's going on. Was and there let an him illegal know hookup? And she was gonna move in the house. When she moved in the house, Ms. he was Palmer, gonna take care of what's Was going there on. an illegal hookup of electricity? Was there a legal hookup? I didn't hook it up. It was hooked up when she came to the door and she knew it was hooked up. You're, she you're, knew you're the evading my question. I'm gonna ask you again. This is a yes or no question, ma'am. Was the electricity hooked up illegally? Were you were you getting electricity from one of your neighbors in the house? No, ma'am. Coming up on Judge Faith, the truth is in the evidence. This is the electrical box where there should be a meter, but as you can see, there's a metal plate there. The services were shut off. According to this photo, there's no meter. Why is that? There's no meter because the service is shut off. But they don't remove the meter when the service is shut off. Plaintiff Brenda Brown says the rental home wasn't ready. She's suing for the return of her security deposit. Defendant Catherine Palmer says she's keeping the deposit as an inconvenience fee. She's countersuing for expenses and defamation of character. Let me see your evidence. I wasn't getting electricity from no one. The electric was already on in the house because me and the co-owner owned the house together. I didn't hook up no illegal electricity. I, but I, I didn't told ask you her if you the lights and gas was on already. Okay, I didn't ask you if you hooked it up. I asked, was there an illegal hookup present oh, at the home. Oh, her. She called DTE to get it shut down. No, I'm down. asking you, Ms. Palmer. This is your house. I, I'm not aware of that part. Okay, let me, it was let me see the photos. I had to check with the uh, previous owner. What is this a photo of, ma'am? Well, that's starting the pole. It shows the um, electrical line, and I followed it all the way out to the alley to the hookup pole. And there was no meter as okay, well. Okay, where's that wire running? 
all the way out away to the from alley. the house. Away, yeah, away oh, from the house to into the alley. Okay, alley. excuse me, Your Honor. I paid $650 to get that. That belongs to me. It, if you're not renting the house, why Ms. is you in my yard? Ms. Ms. Palmer, would you please address the court? Yes. Okay. Now, what is this a photo of? <laughs> This is the electrical box where there should be a meter that clicks and shows how many kilowatts you use. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, there's a metal plate there. The services Excuse were me. shut off. Mm. And why why is there no meter here? I mean, according to this photo, there's no meter. Why is that? There's no meter because the service is shut off. That's mm -hmm. what she's saying. The service is shut off. But they don't remove the meter when the service is shut off. No, I, I paid for that box. This is a new, newly graded box, and this is how they hooked it up. And then you, when she called and have okay, the service Okay, how do you, I mean, you called who? Um, I went to DTE Energy on April the 7th. Oh, April 7th? April 7th. Why I did you go on April 7th? So that I could find out if the um, utilities could be turned on in my name. Because she had my 1500 I was definitely ready to move in because she had my 1500 So you were then going to still try to move in? As opposed to losing $1,500. Yes, ma'am, I was. Excuse okay, me. what did they tell you? I spoke with someone in the utility fraud department. She Why said she that? did not need to see my pictures or any of my evidence because they have an open case at that address, the homeowner is aware of it and cannot rent it out because no one can get utility services there. Were you aware that there was some kind of open investigation? Your Honor, she changed her mind about renting the house. There was Again, no you're investigation. Not answering my question. No, no, no. She didn't even mention DTE to me, or that's the reason for changing her mind. Okay, here's what you wrote in your answer. Yes. So we can get some clarity on okay. this. Okay. You say you later found out that the other owner of the house had been stealing electricity and it wasn't you. Mm -hmm. So it you was. were aware. No, how did you, how did you find out? After the fact. Yeah. This was all after April the 3rd, after she changed her mind. I'm trying to figure out, seriously, so when did why you find she changed out? her mind. When did you find out that he had been stealing electricity and there was an issue with the company? When I found out, when Ruth to the rescue called me. She called the police on me. She called Ruth to the rescue. She told me she was going to call DTE. She called all the people. Because I just asked you about five times attendant. what was going on with the electricity, <laughs> and you said you had no idea. You forgot this what you wrote after, in your answer? This was after the fact that she I don't decided care when it not was. to rent it. I don't care when it was. OK, this is when I found he, out. I found out through her. OK, Ooh. now we get to the truth. At this point, I don't understand why you're keeping her $1,500. Clearly, the house isn't ready to be your moved, Honor, moved into. She inconvenienced me. She knew the condition of the house. The house was full of furniture. I didn't have the house set up to rent yet. I was calling myself compromising to make her happy. So you think you said no. she had cancer. Thank you. She's, she stay in the hospital all the time. Her daughter, 14-year-old daughter, goes right down the street. I was trying to make her happy, and then she changed her mind. You don't, you don't, so me. you have no history with this woman. You don't know her from anyone. No, no. And if the house isn't ready to rent, then you tell them no. But what exactly. you don't do is take their money Amen. and keep the money knowing that the house isn't ready to rent. That's what you yeah, don't I, do. Yeah, she knew the condition of the house and still wanted the house. So I made a way for her to move in the house. I moved all my stuff out. I paid for you haul I paid people to move the stuff out of the house. So now, here's what you wrote to her in a text message. You say, you stalked me for my property, and I told correct. you from the beginning I did not want to rent it. You insisted I rent it, so I moved my stuff. I'm a bad girl. And this is what, this is, this is what I moved my stuff me. To, to please her, because she said she had me. cancer. I'm I thought I was Hold on, her. hold on. Let her talk. Okay. Relax. This is what concerns me. She responds, she's asking for her money back, and she tells you she's gonna take you to court, see you in court. So you say to her, this is what I needed from you. What are you talking about? Just for her to keep, you know, the things that she was saying. She had had, we had phone conversation oh, sure. earlier before the text, mm -hmm. and I needed her to keep changing her story, and then she was writing, you know, texting, because I knew not to talk to her anymore. She was texting, and I got confused. I didn't understand what she was talking about, as if, I'm inconveniencing her. Uh, she moved her stuff out for me. I'm this, that, and the other. And I told her, hey, hold up. What are you talking about? And so you say, this is what I needed from you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I will show you a crazy B. Get she called ready. me that on the phone, Your Honor. You respond, no, and you me. say, meet me at my house on I ain't scary. Tell me what time, and I will be there, court or not. Hey, now. Man. So, so, so you going to fight? You going to fight over the 1500 hey. I was going to give her $500 three times just That doesn't sound like what you off, planning on But I was message. trying to get her to meet me at my house because she just got through calling me out my name. So I told her she was a wish-washy 
you know what, do yeah. our games. You say meet meet you at and the you house. You don't know what you want, so why am I Quarter even not. wasting my time? You don't want the place no more. One minute she wants it, the next what minute she of, don't. What, what kind oh. of landlord are you? What, what do you do when somebody's late on the rent? I wasn't. The rent is due on the I first. They haven't paid on the third. What do you tell them? Meet you on the corner? No, <laughs> no. She threatened me in order for me to. She threatened me in order for me to say that. She called me a crazy. <laughs> okay. What is your counterclaim about, Miss Palmer? My counterclaim is defamation of character. First of all, this lady says I'm a thief. Okay, she came no, to my you're house. suing for moving expenses. Yes. Your electricity bill, you, you want Correct. her to pay. Because she the one who called DTE and had a fraud case put on me. I did not reside at the house. I Ma'am, the, the you, you weren't even getting electricity legally. So how I don't do you want know her to pay about for that? that? I told her I had to speak to the co-owner concerning that. And this way before this. And mm -hmm. how did she defame your character? She called me a thief. You see when mm -hmm. she wrote that yes, down I in did. there? How am I a thief and you brought the money and gave it to me and I offered to give it back? Well, Less you the moving expenses. But you, you didn't give it back. That's why we're here. Right. Because since she said, okay, I got her, I tried to get her to meet me on the follow-up. <laughs> She's not gonna meet you. <laughs> look, look. Wait, she called me, she said May 1st at your you demand. Your she state. said May 1st at your demand. So I, I, I asked her, court or not? Court or not? Are we going to court? If not, my hand's not tied. I can give you the money. She said court. Okay. okay? Doesn't does sound we like you were meeting her to give her money based on this text message. Doesn't mm -hmm. sound like that's why you were offering to meet. Well, that's what it started off as until she got crazy on me. Ooh. <laughs> Coming up, Judge Faith rules. And now, Judge Faith rules. Here's the issue. I understand that the two of you did not have a signed lease, but there was clearly a verbal contract at play right. here. Right, and, she and she's giving. Hold on, okay. she's giving you fifteen hundred dollars okay. in the middle of March to be able to move in by um, April third. And I hit the house. And based ready. on the testimony that I've heard today, on April first, when she sees the repairs aren't done, that's an issue. But more importantly, my biggest concern is her not being able to get electricity because the according to the company DTE it had been turned off and there was an investigation about theft of electricity and she submitted more photos than what I showed here okay. where clearly there are wires going away from this house in into the alley That's she to get electricity and get it cut off she the one who And you haven't proven and, and she she certainly does not owe you for moving expenses when did you sell the house by the way so April the 29th Okay, so you sold the house on April 29th, so you're not even really out of a full month of rent, even though she, she told me decided to do whatever not to move I in. wanted to do with the so house. So you're so suing for defamation, you're suing for your moving expenses, you want her to pay and it wasn't no the repairs? electricity bill. Okay, excuse me. It wasn't no. no repairs that we discussed that was gonna be done. I was handing the lady some locks. I was trying to help the lady just like I was trying to help her with the moving expenses. The lady set this whole thing up. If Your you Honor. check her, I bet she bipolar schizo. Your Honor. <laughs> Your Honor. I don't think you're in a, posi in a position to diagnose oh, okay. yeah. anyone. Your, your, your Honor, may I say one thing, please? Uh, no, no. <clears throat> and, and I understand you feel like she stalked you and and forced you to take this fifteen hundred dollars and out. and forced you to okay. rent your property when you did not really want to rent it. Right. But I I, I just I don't find that to be credible, Miss Palmer. I, I find myself so not to be so friendly no more. I'm dismissing your counterclaim, judgment in this case is for the plane of fifteen hundred dollars. Thank okay. you. Ron. You have a blessed day. The judgment today, I would like to thank Judge Faith. She's fair. She gave me a chance to have my story heard, and I really appreciate it. I feel as though it was unfair, because DTE Energy has nothing to do with you renting your property out. That's the responsibility of the tenants, not the homeowners. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.